Good evening and welcome to our program. This series is focusing on This Is Your FBI. This Is Your FBI was a radio crime drama which aired in the United States on ABC from April 6, 1945 to January 30th, 1953 for a total of 409 shows. The show featured true cases from the FBI and was told from an FBI agent's viewpoint. FBI Chief J. Edgar Hoover gave it his endorsement, calling it our show and calling it the finest dramatic program on the air. Generally, I do not include advisories. Given Hoover's polarizing nature, I will share this. Dramatized stories created for propaganda purposes are not history. They tell one biased side of the story, and in no way am I saying that these are reliable stories. I just believe them to be interesting when viewed through the scope of entertainment and weird history. Finally, I'd like to send a specific thank you to publicdomainreview.org and archive.org for organizing and compiling all of this media. If you would like to listen to standalone media, we have included a link in the description. The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is your FBI, an official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Now a special request to boys and girls. If your father and mother don't happen to be listening to This Is Your FBI tonight, please get them. Tell them that the Equitable Life Assurance Society, the sponsor of this program, is going to make an important announcement to homeowners and to all families that are thinking of buying or building a home. Tell mother and dad they're going to miss something if they don't get the facts on America's finest plan for home ownership. Tonight's FBI file, The Carnival Killing. Day after day, the criminal goes on defying it. And as twice reflected in tonight's case from the files of your FBI... Day after day, he is caught up in its inevitability. The inevitability of that ancient truth which disciplines all human conduct and from which there is no exemption. Be sure your sins will find you out. Our story tonight could take place in most any kind of setting you could name. And it could involve persons of most any rank or station in life. But it just so happens that this particular time, it actually took place in a carnival setting. That music, of course, is coming from a merry-go-round somewhere down the midway. And the crowd, just part of the Saturday afternoon throng. Over here to one side, the main money wagon. The attractive girl seated at the open window is the cashier. And the dapper young gent in the plaid suit and straw hat just walking up to her runs the concession just across the midway. Hi, babe. Hi, Larry. Well, how goes with the ump chase, huh? Oh, kind of slow. Mm, yeah, I got the same complaint. No booze? Not enough. But uh, here's a hundred you can salt away for us. Hey, that ain't bad. Well, if the suckers will start throwing hoops, I ought to take in another yard by shutdown. Keep slugging then, Junior. Uh, pretty soon, babe. You get that ring. You mean the big one? The one we've seen in St. Louis? Oh, are you kidding? That comes heavy, sweetie. Well, it was your idea. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll keep slugging for it. Here, give me uh, four rolls of quarters, huh? Mm-hmm. Here you are. Uh, see you later, babe. So long, Larry. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Well, we settled the intro real quick, didn't we? Did we? My name's Jack Crawford. What's yours? People who know me call me babe. 
I'll buy that. You don't know me. I will. Fast operator. How long have you been waiting for that ring? You were on the Erie. That's right. Why should the ring interest you? With me, you could have had it by now. Stop, will you? I mean it. Look, that ring has a marriage deal wrapped around it, mister. So, uh, I guess the show is over. Just the first act, babe. What do you mean? Here comes the second act now. Oh, he's seen you talking to me. What's wrong with that? Larry don't like for me to fool around. No kidding. Okay, Mac, quit bothering to help and move along before I... Before you what? Just get moving, that's all. You remember me now, don't you? Don't you? What are you talking about? Babe, there's an old saying. You can't fool all of the people all of the time. Not even with a mustache. Am I right, Mr. Hampton? His name ain't Hampton. It's Marlin. Back in Terre Haute, it was Hampton. Larry, what's this all about? Oh, he's got me mixed up, that's all. Babe, tell the guy to quit covering, will you? It just so happens that your boyfriend here is a deserter from the Army. What? And on account of that, the FBI is looking for him. And that's they... enough. I figured it would be. Larry. Now, as I was saying, back in Terre Haute, his name was Hampton. We were old pals back there, right, Larry? Well, even though he won't admit it, honey, we were. And because we were pals, I'm going to have to ask him for a little favor. What do you want? I got to get out of circulation for a while. And this looks like a good place to do it. So, I'm moving in with you. Now, wait a minute. And remember, before you make any beef, that I'm in a real good spot to blow a whistle. So, how about it? Okay. Well, that's the end of the second act. Third act coming up, babe. A few miles away in the St. Louis office of the FBI, agent in charge Phillips has just summoned Special Agent Gaynor to his office. You want to see me, Mr. Phillips? Yes, Gaynor. Well, what's up? Just got a follow-up on that Oklahoma bank robbery yesterday. Really? The agents down there caught two of the men early this morning. Did they talk? Yes. Here's the description of the third man, still at large. Hmm. Has it been checked with Washington? That's Washington's check on it in your hand now. Just came in on the teletype. Oh. The man's name is Jack Crawford. He's already served two years for robbery, too. His home state is Indiana, and he just may be headed for there. Which could bring him through Missouri and maybe even St. Louis. How was he traveling last? In the car they used in the robbery. There's an alarm out on it now. Well, he may abandon that soon. If so, it'll make his trail that much hotter. Well, are we getting a set of fingerprints and a photo on him? In the morning, airmail. Good. You better contact police headquarters here right away and see that they're up to date on the case, and state police, too. Right. Just a minute. How are you tonight, babe? Hello there. Got sick of hanging around Larry's trailer. Thought I'd come over and see yours. Uh-huh. Is you asking me in? Okay, come ahead. Thanks. Hey, it's real nice. All them curtains and stuff, just like home. Thanks. You, uh, through work for the day? No, I just got two hours off. Well, I got two free hours myself. Mind if I sit down? Go ahead. Thanks. Where's Larry? Out clipping the suckers, I guess. <laughs> you know, this county business is quite a touch. Imagine making a living out of people throwing hoops at little kids. Does Larry know you came over here? Why? He ain't gonna like it. That gonna bother you? No. Then, uh, let's not worry about him, hmm? Okay. Tell me something, will you? What? This ring business. You really gonna marry the guy? That's the general idea. Why? Why do most people get married? Well, the book says love, 
You know, that moonlight and roses stuff. But uh, I don't seem to catch any of that going on with you. You're doing an awful fast add-up, mister. No. Just watching history repeat itself. What do you mean? I already told you I knew Larry back in Terre Haute. So? So I've seen him in action with other dames. He's one of them nice guy characters. You know, sweetheart, that's all right for squares, but it ain't for you. Am I right? Want some coffee? Am I right? You're right. You know what you really want? Someone like me. I'm going to make that coffee. Wait a minute. Come in. Well? Now, look, sweetheart. Who is it? Me, Larry. Oh. Let him in. But he... Let him in. Hiya, honey. I just got a minute and I thought I'd... What are you doing here, Jack? Just dropped in. Babe, has this guy been bothering you? No. No, he... he... He just came here looking for you. He knew where to find me. He came here to see you. Look. Remember, I'm your guest. You forget it, you'll be Uncle Sam's guest, so just take it easy. See you later, babe. Phillips speaking. Now, this is Gaynor, Mr. Phillips. Oh, got a lead on Jack Crawford? Yes, the police just found his car. Where? He drove it into a garage here in St. Louis yesterday morning early and apparently abandoned it. That gives him over a 24-hour start on us. I know. Any new auto thefts reported? No. And start checking bus, railroad, and airline terminals and ticket offices. You've got his photo. Yes. If he didn't steal or buy transportation out of here, then he's somewhere in the vicinity. I hope he is. So do I. Keep in touch. Right. <laughs> I thought you were going to wait for me at the money wagon. I didn't say I would. But you always do. Look, I've got to get back to the trailer. Well, wait, wait a minute, babe. Look, i got to talk to Save you. Save it, will you, Larry? I'm tired. Well, I just wanted to tell you, honey, I, I'm sorry about this afternoon. I didn't mean to blow my top. But that guy coming to see you, finding him there, I just couldn't take you it. You told me all that. Good night, Larry. Uh, let me come in a minute, babe. Uh, I've got to talk this out with you. It's been talked out. Please, huh? J- just for a minute. Okay, come ahead. Don't forget this is getaway night. We've got a long trip ahead of us. I know. Can you turn on the light? Yeah, sure. There we are. Hiya, Larry. Jack. What are you doing here? Waiting for babe. Well, what for? Because I wanted to see her. Look, you get out of here. Get out quick. Now, wait a minute. I think Babe should have something to say about that. You want me to go, hon? Leave her out of this. Look, please, don't start anything. Yeah, the army might not like it. Jack, I got some news for you on that army business. It isn't going to work anymore. No? No. You know why I deserted. You know I went over the hill because my mother was sick. And at the time, I didn't have guts enough to go back. But your moving in on me has changed my mind. This hero talk is for your benefit, honey. No, no, no. It's for something I found again after a long, long time. My self-respect. Oh, this is great. Tell us more, Daddy. I've finished. Now get out. What for? You're going to turn yourself in. There's no need for me to get out. Ever. What do you mean? You tell him, babe. No, Jack, please. Okay, then I'll spill It makes no difference to Babe whether you go through with this patriotic pitch or not. What? She's changed her mind, too. Babe, what's he talking about? Look, let's not argue any more tonight, huh? Honey, he might as well know. Well? She's found herself a real guy. Why, you dirty... (gasps) Jack! Jack, darling, did he hurt you? Yeah, he hurt me, but not as bad as this bottle will hurt him. (laughs) Hit him awful hard. So what? 
He's bleeding awful bad. Jack, I... I think he's dead. And now, before the FBI file on the carnival killing resumes, as it will in just a moment, here's that important message for homeowners and home buyers. This week at the Equitable Life Assurance Society, I met a man with one of the biggest smiles I've ever seen in my life. Boy, do I feel good, he grinned, and he waved a paper at me. You see that, he said? That's the mortgage on my house. And today, it's just a piece of paper. That mortgage is all paid off every last cent. I own my home free and clear, and nobody can take it away from me. Well, there's no question about it. One of the red-letter days in any man's life is the day he pays off his mortgage. And that's a day that's not too far off when you buy a house through the Equitable Society's Assured Home Ownership Plan. A plan which combines these five advantages. One, the mortgage is canceled, paid off in full if owner dies. Immediately, the widow owns her home free and clear. Two, a special cash fund is built up, and it's always ready to be used if financial emergencies threaten the home. Three, Mortgage interest, not at 6%, not at 5%, but at only 4%. Four, liberal allowance to cover title search, lawyers' fees, and other closing costs. No broker's commission or bonus charges. Five, one low monthly payment covers everything and provides free and clear ownership in the time you select. Well, frankly, there is no other plan like this anywhere. The Equitable Society calls it America's finest plan for home ownership. It protects you against the two major hazards of home mortgages, death and hard times. So if you're planning to buy or build a house, or if you now own a home, get complete information on the assured home ownership plan from your Equitable Society representative. That's the Equitable Society. E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file, The Carnival Killing. Sometimes fate inflicts a far severer penalty for a crime than justice would have meted out. Justice would not have demanded the life of the army deserter, the man called Larry Marlin, but fate in the form of a conspiracy by one who found out his crime did take his life. Though however harsh the penalty, it confirms the inevitability of that truth. Be sure your sins will find you out. And as for the man who took his life... It is next morning now, and in answer to a call from police headquarters a few minutes ago, agent in charge Phillips of the FBI's St. Louis office, accompanied by Special Agent Gaynor, have just entered the city morgue. Here's the body right here, Mr. Phillips. We knew, of course, this couldn't be Jack Crawford. No, that's not Crawford. But since no identification was found on him, we thought we'd better check with you in case he just might be somebody else the FBI was interested in. Glad you did. Took a set of fingerprints for you. Here they are. Thanks. Anything familiar about him to you, Gaynor? No, I I can't say that there is. Look again, Gaynor. Forget there's a mustache on him. Yes. Yes, there is something kind of familiar about that face, now that you mention it. Lawrence Hampton. Hampton? He's an army deserter. We took his photo out of the files just last week. Oh, sure, I remember. I'm certain it's he. Well, the fingerprints will tell for sure. Where was this body found, officer? Way out near the edge of town. South side, just before daylight. It's a nasty gash on his head. Yes, we thought at first he was a hit-and-run victim. But we checked some fragments of glass. We found the wound. They weren't from headlights. What then? They appear to be pieces from a whiskey bottle. And this was deliberate murder. I'd think so. Any trace of the whiskey bottle near the body? 
No, and we did a thorough search for it, too. It's my theory that the murder was committed somewhere else, and the body dumped there. Where are his clothes? We had them outside in the locker. Gainer. Yes, sir? Check them over. See what you can find. Right. I'm going to take these prints back to the office and make sure they're Hamptons. You, babe? Yeah. I thought you were working right through. Well, I had to get a relief. I feel awful. What's the matter? Now, what do you think? Look, forget that, will you? Jack, how can I? Nothing's going to happen, baby. When they find the body, they'll think he was hit by a car, that's all. Besides, he's a lamester. The cops won't care how he got it. That part of it don't bother me. What are you feeling so bad about? The way it happened. You're killing him like that. Look, how many times do I have to tell you I did it in self-defense? Besides, it brought us together, didn't it? Yeah. All right. Anybody been asking for him? Sure. What'd you tell him? Just like we made it up that he went off on a bender this morning as soon as we hit the lot. Probably wound up in St. Louis. That should cover it good. Jack, let's get out of here. Quit the show? Yeah. Look, honey, if you take a run out, you might as well put an ad in the paper that you've done the job. i done it. Sure. So take a pill for your nerves, kid, and go on back to work. Everything's going to turn out fine. Can I come in, Mr. Phillips? Yes, come ahead, Gaynor. How'd you make out? I have plenty to report. Good. Oh, uh, by the way, the victim is definitely Hampton. I checked the prints. And I checked his clothes. What'd you find? Well, nothing much until I got down to his shoes. Well, what about them? Well, I examined the heels. Uh -huh. and they were made of rubber, and yeah. stuck in the indentations were bits of what turned out to be popcorn, peanut shells, and sawdust. That sounds like you've been to the circus. But there aren't any playing in St. Louis. Well, there was a carnival playing quite near where Hampton was found. It closed last night. I see. Now, if the officer's theory was right, if Hampton was killed elsewhere and dumped on the highway... The murder might have been committed on or near the carnival grounds. Yes. And I'm checking to find out where the show moved to, and well, meanwhile, I wondered if I should cooperate with the local police and hop out and go over the grounds with them. Good idea. Get on it right away. Phillips speaking. Uh, this is Gaynor, Mr. Phillips. Oh, where are you, Gaynor? I just left the carnival grounds. Any luck? Yes, plenty. We found a number of blood-stained fragments of the bottle that was used in the murder. That was a break. I know. The neck of the bottle was intact, and there appears to be a good set of fingerprints on it. Fine, fine. And we found these fragments where the trailers had been parked, the trailers that the people in the show lived in. I see. Well, that could localize the killing. Yes. Now, has any report come in on where the show moved to? Not yet. It shouldn't be hard to find. Well, I'll bring the section of the bottle with the prints back with me. Good. We can do a quick check in our files before sending them on to Washington. Yes, sir. I'll be right over. Gaynor. Yes, sir? Will you put those prints under the glass again, please? Yes, sir. There's something familiar about that one whorl. Hand me that stack of prints there. All right. I'm just going to play a hunch. Here you are. Now, let me see. That's identical. Those lines check. Little break there. It's the same gainer, the same prints. My hunch was right. Well, who is it? Our elusive friend, Jack Crawford. Crawford? Yes. Really? Well, how did he and Hampton ever get together? Well, that's what we have to find out. You say this bottle was found near where they parked the employees' trailers? That's right. There's a chance Crawford is somehow linked with that show. Well, a report just came in. We know they're play where they're playing now. It's only 50 miles from I here. I think we'd better get out there fast. <laughs> Who is it? Let me in. Come on. What'd you have the door locked for? I ain't looking for company. 
Thought you were going to keep working. Oh, Jack, I had to quit. A thousand pills wouldn't do me any good. No, I really. mean it. Every time a stranger had come up to the booth, I think it was a cop getting set to ask a few questions. I, I felt people standing in the crowds looking at me like they were watching my every move. Hey, take it easy, will you? Will you take I it easy? I can't go on with this anymore. We've got to get out of here and right now. What will we use for dough? I got Larry's money. Some he gave me toward the ring. How far will that get us? I don't care. We've got to go now. Okay, babe. We do it your way. But how do we explain pulling out? Well, I'll say that I'm going to St. Louis to look for Larry. That'll do, I guess. You go get the car. It's parked in the lot. Okay. Stay where you are, Crawford. Huh? Don't try anything. Jack, who's that? We're special agents of the FBI. What? F- we want to talk to you both about the murder of Larry Hampton. <laughs> Jack Crawford was sentenced to a long term in the penitentiary for the murder of Larry Hampton. His female companion was also sent to prison for her part in the crime. Why do criminals go on defying the inevitability of that inexorable truth? Be sure your sins will find you out. Why do they go on making their futile challenges to the inescapability of justice? Why do they play a game they cannot possibly beat? It's not even a gamble, for a gamble presupposes a chance to win. But justice gives no odds. Justice is unbeatable. Next week, another thrilling case from the files of your FBI. We'll tell you about it in just a moment. But now, let me refresh your memory on the more important features of the Equitable Society's Assured Home Ownership Plan. Remember that the mortgage interest is only 4%. Remember that one low monthly payment covers everything. Remember that if the owner dies, the widow owns the home without any mortgage at all. Yes, the Assured Home Ownership Plan is practically foreclosure-proof. These are only a few of the advantages of the Assured Home Ownership Plan. To get the full story, talk to the Equitable Society representative in your community. Ask him for literature that gives you all details. Look in your local phone book for the name, The Equitable Life Assurance Society, E-Q-U-I, T-A-B-L-E, the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, The Fugitive Horse Player. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner, the author was Frank Ferries, and your narrator was Dean Carlton. This is your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. And now this is Carl Frank speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Fugitive Horse Player. On this is your FBI.
This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. <laughs> This is your FBI, an official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. In a few minutes, the Equitable Life Assurance Society, sponsors of this program, will have an important announcement for home owners and for all families that are thinking of buying or building a home. If your husband or wife is not now listening to this program, get him or her. Both of you should hear the good news about America's finest plan for home ownership, a plan that can save you money and give you greater security in a home of your own. Tonight's FBI file, The Singing Swindler. It is a paradox of human nature that we are most easily deceived in that field which we know best. On strange ground, we protect ourselves with the armor of caution. Well, on familiar ground, we expose a vanity of infallibility, which, as demonstrated by tonight's case from the files of your FBI, is the Achilles heel by which we are felled. To the visitor, it must seem that every night is carnival night in the famous old French quarter of New Orleans. For when the sun goes down, the spirit of the fiesta comes up. And from the cafes and gardens of balconied houses, music and laughter pour out into a main stream of gaiety which courses through the narrow streets until dawn. On this particular night, in a small side street cafe, a tall, big-shouldered man sits alone at a table in a corner, sipping his fourth absinthe frappe and obviously enjoying the club's table singer as he finishes a ballad for a couple of honeymooners. ran all alone like a queen on a throne if I had uh, that was wonderful thanks a lot Here, here's something for you oh, thanks very much now I better go over and see what he wants huh? Yes, sir. Uh, some special song you'd like to hear? Yes, you bet your son. Sit down. Ah, thank you. What would you like? Another drink. Hey, waiter. Yes, sir? Uh, give me another one of these things. Uh, what do you want? Oh, not a thing, thanks. Oh, what do you mean, not a thing? Everybody drinks with Bill Taylor. Now, what do you want? All right, scotch and water. Okay, waiter, you heard the man. Yes, sir. <laughs> now, what's your name, partner? Eddie Burnett. Well, put her there, partner. I'm Bill Taylor. I'm from Texas. <laughs> I kind of thought you might be. <laughs> yes, sir, Eddie. Just made another killing in oil. I'm out tooting it up a little. I never drink when I work. Hey, I haven't given you any, too, have I? Your record's clean with me, Bill. Well, here's 20. Uh, how's about another song? How's about Eyes of Texas? Great. Only, uh, you're going to be here a couple of minutes, aren't you, Bill? Well, where are you going, partner? Wait, here's another 20. Sit down. Oh, I'll be right back. I, uh... I just got to go over and sit with that old lady for a minute. Yeah? Well, what's an old lady like her doing around here alone? Well, she was telling me about it before you came in. Asked me to sing a special number for her. Is that so? Yeah. She said she and her husband always came here every year on their anniversary. Well, where's the old man? Well, it seems he died a couple of months ago, but she's decided to come anyway. Well, now, what do you know about that? Here are your drinks, sir. Well, uh, wait, uh, you, you see that old lady sitting over there? Yes, sir. Well, you bring her the best bottle of champagne you've got in the house and tell her it's an anniversary present. Yes, sir. Well, that's pretty nice of you, Bill. Oh, that's nothing, partner. The, the, that's what money's for. You know, it's funny you being in the oil business. What's so funny about the oil business? Oh, I didn't mean it that way. Uh, 
just that the old lady was telling me that her husband left her some oil leases. Yeah? On some land down in the Delta. Well, what do you know? Well, you know how old ladies are sometimes. Tell everybody their personal business. Sure, <laughs> sure. Say, hey, uh, what'd she tell you about the leases? Well, she told me she didn't much know what to do about them, but she thought while she was here in New Orleans, maybe she could sell them. Sell them, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, buying them is my business. Well, do you want to meet her? Yes, I'd like to very much. Okay. Uh, I'll find out what hotel she's staying at. <laughs> well, no, I like you. I like you too, Bill. Uh, do me a favor before you go, will you? I sure, partner. <laughs> oh, you got me doing it now. <laughs> What's the favor? Well, uh, sing Eyes of Texas. Okay. Hey, Joe, Eyes of Texas. The Eyes of Texas are upon Mrs. Grayson? Uh, yes. I have this note to you. Oh. Uh, well, wait till I put on my spectacles. Uh, dear Mrs. Grayson, this is the gentleman I spoke to you about last night. His name is Bill Till. Oh. Oh, yes. Oh, won't you please sit down? Well, thank you, ma'am. Oh, it's very kind of you, Mr. Taylor, to take the time to come and see me. Oh, no trouble at all, Mrs. Grayson. That's my business, oil leases. Why, how lucky I am to meet a nice, honest man like you. Well, now, don't you worry, Mrs. Grayson. Old Bill Taylor is known as the most honest man in the state of Texas. Well, isn't that nice? Your wife must be so happy. Mary Lou? <laughs> Happiest wife in Texas. Yeah, but uh, <clears throat> let's get down to business, Miss Grayson. Oh, all right. <laughs> but I'm afraid that you'll have to do all the work. Oh, I don't mind that, big, strong man like me. <laughs> I don't mind telling you. I've been trying to pick up some more leases down there on the Delta. Well, now, isn't it lucky that we met, then? Sure is. For you and for me. Here. Here are the papers that I found in Dan's safe. Uh, there are five different ones. What do they all mean, Mr. Taylor? Now, they cover different parcels of land, but you just oh. leave everything to me, Miss Grayson. I won't cheat you. No, I don't believe you would, Mr. Taylor. Well, <laughs> thank you, ma'am. Now, well, let's see. There's some 300 acres in all. Is that a lot? Oh, you bet it is. Oh. By George, right smack in the middle of the Delta. Well, uh, what do you think it's worth, Mr. Taylor? Well, I'm going to tell you right out. It's worth $10,000 in cash to me. $10,000? Old Bill oh. Taylor, most honest man in Texas. That's what it's worth, and that's what you're going to get. Land sake. Oh, I'm so grateful to you, Mr. Taylor. What well, nonsense. This is a business proposition. Yeah, we'll just call up the public stenographer and draw up a transfer, and you'll have your money inside of an hour. My, my. Then, uh, it's a deal? Uh, yes, Mr. Taylor, thank you. It's a deal. <laughs> Not many blocks away from the Bayou Hotel where the deal between Mrs. Grayson and Mr. Taylor was consummated, Special Agent Nolan of the New Orleans field office of the FBI is just entering the office of Agent in Charge Clark. Did you send for me, sir? Uh, yes, Nolan. I just received this alert from Washington on a swindler. Oh? Two weeks ago, she put over a job in Miami. A woman? Yes. Last week, it was Atlanta. Oh, it sounds like she might be working the Southern Circuit. Yes, that's Washington's opinion. And New Orleans might be, or might have been, the next jump. What's her specialty? Well, she's an elderly woman who pretends to have been widowed recently, wants to dispose of property that her husband left her. Mm-hmm. In Miami, she sold a fake deed to a citrus farm. In, uh, in Atlanta, it was a fake deed to a thousand acres of pine trees. Here in New Orleans, it might be anything from oil wells to a sugar plantation. Well, that's about it. Here's a description. Okay. A Miami and Atlanta offices are working on further details of a modus operandi. Anything you want me to do? Yes, I want you to start checking on all hotels. How much did he go for, Granny? Oh, you mean Mr. Taylor, Eddie? I wasn't thinking about Clark Gable. Don't be funny, young man. Okay, okay. 
Hey, but what about that cheap bum trying to double-cross you and get those leases cheap? Well, it just shows, Eddie, that what I've told you is true. Honesty is always the best policy. Yeah, yeah, I know. But you didn't tell me yet. Didn't tell you what, Eddie? How much did you get? Oh, uh, 5000 uh, And we've got... Granny, now. don't uh, play games with me. How much did you get from the sucker? Oh, all right. I, I got 7500 why, Grandma, what big lies you have. Why, my boy, Can what? it. I know you got 10 Gs. Oh, yes, yes, yes. What'd so you lie to me are. for? Well, I was going to save it for a rainy day. Okay, but don't save for the Johnstown flood. My gracious, here we've been standing talking all this while. Eddie, we've got to move along. Okay, I'll be packed in a minute. I'm going to leave the door between our rooms open just so you don't get any ideas about making the trip by yourself. Why, Eddie... If you're going to talk like that to me, well, I'm just afraid that I'll never be able to swindle anybody else with you again. And you know what they say in baseball? What? They say never break up a winning team. Agent in charge, Clark speaking. This is Nolan. Oh, hello. Did you get a lead? Not yet. I'm still checking hotels. Thought I'd better call in. Yes, I'm glad you did. I just received more details from Miami and Atlanta. Good. What's new? A woman has an assistant. Oh? A young man about 35, 6 feet, 180 pounds. He plays the part of a table singer in nightclubs and cafes. Oh, he's the bird dog in spotting potential victims, huh? That's right. And if they're working New Orleans, he might be easier to get a line on than the woman. Well, then suppose I hop over to the quarter and start checking cafes. Right. I'll put another man on the hotels. How are you coming along, Granny? Yeah, I'm almost finished packing, Eddie. Are you all finished? Yeah, all packed and ready to go. No, who can that be? Don't answer, Granny. Don't be silly, Eddie. You, uh, I've got to answer. You get back to your room and close the door. Okay, but I'll keep it unlocked just in case. Oh, why, hello again, Mr. Taylor. May I come in? There's something I want to talk to you about. Why, of course. There's something we overlooked this morning, Mrs. Grayson. Overlooked? Uh, well, what was that? I reckon you could have knocked me over with a feather, ma'am. Oh, no, not a big man like you. Uh, but what came as such a surprise? You. Me? Oh, well, I'm sure I don't understand what you mean. What I overlooked was uh, checking those leases with the records. The records? Yes, the records at the county courthouse where all the leases are placed on file. Well, I told you, Mr. Taylor, that I don't understand much about those things. You see, my husband... It's too late for that, Mrs. Grayson. Too late for... Yes. You see, I called the Crescent City Oil Company right off. Well, what did you do that for? To see if they wanted to buy the leases. And what did they say, Mr. Taylor? Uh, they weren't interested. Well, now, I don't understand that. You told me this morning that the land was so valuable. It is valuable. But you see, there was a slight coincidence. Uh, coincidence? Yes. It just so happened that the Crescent City Oil Company already owns those 300 acres. They do? Well, yeah, that is a coincidence, isn't it? Mrs. Grayson, I'm a big man in the state of Texas. I didn't call the police the first thing. Well, uh... uh because I feel a little embarrassed, you know, telling them I got caught in a swindle like this. Oh, Mr. Taylor, please. But, don't... Mrs. Grayson, if I don't get that $10,000 in the next minute, I'm going to pick up that phone. Stay away from that door. Eddie. Well, dog my soul. Uh, Eddie, be careful with that gun. You're pointing it right at Mr. Taylor. Yes, I am, and it's loaded, too. Don't worry, Mrs. Grayson. He's not going to do anything with the gun. I said stay away from that phone, and I meant it. Well, I certainly was buffalo. Don't come any closer, Taylor. Why not? This gun might accidentally go off. Uh, what do you want me to do? Stop coming toward me, Taylor. I'll give it off. <laughs> you see, Mrs. Grayson, I told you Eddie wasn't going to do much with that gun. So you did, Mr. Taylor. I'll certainly say that for you. Now, Eddie, we're a pretty even match without guns. So get up. Oh, I got enough. Oh, no, Eddie. I just started to play this game. Get up. Look out, Eddie. Look out, Eddie. What did you do? Come on, Eddie. Mr. Taylor, you're wrong. Get up, Eddie. Oh. 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 Oh.
I oh. think you've just about a gun enough oh. now, young man. So oh. I'll call the police and let them... Oh. <laughs> oh, why in the world didn't you hit him sooner, Granny? Well, that was the first chance I had, Eddie. Boy, he's really odd. What'd you hit him with? That beautiful big vase that was on the piano. Oh, remind me to pay the hotel for it when we check out. Pay for it? Are you crazy? Now, Eddie, we must pay for it. You don't want us to get a reputation for not paying our bills, do you? Back to the FBI file in just a moment after an important message to American home buyers and home owners. This week at the Equitable Life Assurance Society, I heard a story of a little girl with tears in her eyes. Because of her, thousands of American homeowners live in greater security today. Some years ago, the president of the Equitable Society happened to see this little girl crying as if her heart would break, while the sheriff's men moved her family's furniture out into the yard. On inquiry, he learned that her mother, a young widow, had lost their home through a mortgage foreclosure. Shortly thereafter, the president of the Equitable Society called his associates together and said, we're going to have a plan for homeowners to prevent tragedies such as this, a mortgage that will be as near foreclosure-proof as possible. And so was started the Equitable Assured Home Ownership Plan, which offers you these five important advantages. One, the mortgage is canceled, paid off in full if owner dies. Immediately, the widow owns her home free and clear. Two, a special cash fund is built up, and it's always ready to be used if financial emergencies threaten the home. Three, mortgage interest not at 6%, not at 5%, but at only 4%. Four, liberal allowance to cover title search, lawyer's fees, and other closing costs. Five, one low monthly payment covers everything and provides free and clear ownership in the time you select. Frankly, there is no other plan like this anywhere. The Equitable Society calls it America's finest plan for home ownership. It protects you against the two major hazards of home mortgages, death and hard times. If you are planning to buy or build a house, or if you now own a home, get complete information on the assured home ownership plan from your Equitable Society representative. That's the Equitable Society, E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E, the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now, back to the FBI file, The Singing Swindler. No one likes to admit publicly that he has been duped. That is human nature. And swindlers make capital of it every day. But this false expression of self-pride which restrains the victim of a swindle from going to the police sometimes goes a step farther. It urges the victim to take matters into his own hands. And this can prove to be a most costly procedure. A few minutes ago, agent in charge Clark of the New Orleans FBI office received a telephone call from police inspector Rickert. Clark and Special Agent Nolan have just now stepped off the elevator on the eighth floor of the Bio Hotel and reached room 824. Oh, come in, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you, Inspector. Mr. Teller, this is Mr. Clark, and this is Mr. Nolan. They're from the FBI. Oh, mighty glad to see you men here so quick. We got here as soon as we heard from the inspector. Yes, Mr. Taylor. I called him as soon as I found out from the clerk at the desk about the old lady. Well, then the description checked, Inspector? Perfect. And they checked on her accomplice, too. A singer. That's the fellow. Goes by the name of Eddie Burnett. Well, what was the racket this time, Mr. Taylor? Yeah, uh, Mrs. Grayson, if that's her name, she sold me some oil leases. They were fakes, naturally. Yes. How much did you pay her? Ten thousand in cash. Mm -hmm. And then? I found out they were fakes. I came up here to get my money back. Well, I wish you'd call the police sooner, Mr. Taylor. Yeah, every time I touch my head, I wish I had two. Inspector, where was Mr. Taylor found? He was right on the floor, right over there. I see. And 
they'd found him when she came to make up a room. How long ago did they check out? A little more than two hours ago. How did they leave the hotel? I asked the cab starter about that. He said they just walked out. But didn't they have any bags? Yes, that's what made the starter remember them. Nobody leaves the bayou with the luggage and carries it themselves. Mm-hmm. Well, they couldn't have walked far. My guess is they caught a cab at the corner. Yeah, that sounds logical. If they did, they could have been at the airport in half an hour. We'll check the airport, Inspector. But I have an idea that if they were smart enough to walk away from the hotel, they haven't left such an obvious trail as that. Mm-hmm. I guess you're right. Now then, start a check on all railroads and airlines. I'll have Blackwell go to work on the bus terminals. Oh, uh, one more thing, Miss Clark. Yes, Inspector? Here's some handwriting that might be useful. Uh, who's it? The uh, table singers. Yes. It's the note of introduction he wrote when I came to meet Mrs. Grayson. Well, thanks very much, Inspector. All right. And thank you, Mr. Taylor, for being so cooperative. Come on, Ellen. We've got work to do. Eddie? Yeah, what do you want now? Eddie, please speak a little more respectfully. And Eddie, must you sing all the time? What's the matter with my singing? I didn't say there was anything... I sing torch songs like Crosby. Well, let's drop the subject. All I ask is sing when you get paid for it. Okay. I meant to talk to you about that. You don't want me to pay you for singing in this room, do you, Eddie? No, no, that ain't what I mean. I mean, when do I go to work again? Now, you let me take care of the business end. I say we stay under for a little while. But the cops don't know we're in Chicago. Well, I certainly hope you're right, my boy. You know, I give you credit when you got it coming... It's pretty cute the way we got here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Eddie. Yeah, you feel pretty good today, don't you? <laughs> Why not? We pulled three jobs and we've got over twenty-eight thousand between us. Two more jobs, we'll have twenty-five apiece, and well, then you can sing all day long. Okay, okay. Only let's get the next job started. Oh, all right. If you're that impatient, go ahead and get yourself a job. You mean? Certainly. I never say anything I don't mean. All right. Here I go. <laughs> Come in, Nolan. What's up, Clark? Memphis office just phoned. On the uh, Grayson case? That's right. The car the two of them rented here was found abandoned in Memphis. Well, that was pretty cute. Well, the Memphis office took those descriptions we wired out to the airport. And? And found the two of them had hopped a plane for Chicago two days ago. Well, that means they're probably still there. That's it. They've never worked that territory before. Look, there's a flight out of here in 20 minutes for Chicago. I'm going to be on it. Okay, I'll call and make your reservation. Good. Then call the Chicago office and alert them. And tell them what time I get in. Hello, this is Special Agent Clark. Will you put me through to Mr. Walker, please? Hello, Clark. Hello, Walker. Where are you? I'm out at the airport. I just got in. Any word? I'm sorry, Clark, but we haven't been able to dig up a single lead. We checked all nightclubs and theatrical agencies. No lead at any of the hotels either, huh? Well, unless the room clerks are lying to us, they haven't checked in at any hotel we've been to so far. Yeah. We're still working on the hotel, though. How do you account for the fact that he hasn't gone to work yet? From what the theatrical agencies tell me, this isn't a very good time for male table singers. Oh, what do you mean? I hear all the places are putting in girls. Girls, huh? Uh-huh. Uh, wait. I think I've got an idea. Anything I can help on? No, no thanks. I can handle this alone. I'll be in the office in about an hour. Oh. Well, well, what luck? Ah, uh, nobody's booking any male singers. So I'll take a crack at this. Uh, uh, what's that? Just an ad in the afternoon paper. Huh? What does it say? Uh, some cafe wants a male singer, but I've got a right for an interview and an audition. Well, you're not worried about taking an audition, are you? Well, the job only pays 50 in tips. My, they don't know how lucky they are getting Crosby that cheap. (laughs) 
Hello, Granny. Oh, and did you get a call yet, Eddie? No. Uh -uh. Oh, well, don't worry. I'm sure you will. Uh, why, what are you doing, Eddie? Packing. Pa what for? I did a little thinking while you were downstairs. What do you mean? Now, look. I don't like being the number two man in the act, Granny. What do you mean, Eddie? I mean I'm pulling out right now and taking all the dough with me. Eddie! Now, give me that dough and give it to Put me quick. Put down that pistol. Where's the money? Stop it, I tell you. Okay, I... you oh, asked for it. Stop. Drop that gun, Bennett. Drop it. Who are you? What's the idea? Special agents of the FBI. FBI? That's right. You answered our ad and wrote us for an audition, Burnett. Your handwriting tallied with some we got in New Orleans. From a Mr. Taylor. After being tried and convicted, Mrs. Grayson and Edward Burnett were sentenced to long terms in the federal penitentiary. Again, we repeat what we have stated before on This Is Your FBI. Swindlers could be put out of business overnight if you, their potential victims, would exercise the simple caution of investigating the stranger with a proposition before doing business with him. Until everyone does exercise that simple caution, your FBI will remain on the job 24 hours a day protecting you, their employers. You. You. The American people. Next week, another thrilling case from the files of your FBI. We'll tell you about it in just a moment. Now a quick review of the important advantages offered homeowners and home buyers by the Equitable Society's Assured Home Ownership Plan. Don't forget, the mortgage interest is only 4%. The mortgage is paid off in full if the owner dies. A cash fund is built up to be used in financial emergencies. If you are seriously interested, get in touch with the Equitable Society representative in your community. He has literature that explains the assured home ownership plan clearly. Call him tomorrow. Call the number of the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, The Carnival Killing. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight's broadcast was directed by William M. Sweets. The music was under the direction of Frederick Steiner. The author was Frank Ferries, and your narrator was Dean Carlton. This Is Your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Andre Baruch speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at the same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Carnival Killing on This Is Your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is Your FBI, an official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community.
As you listen to the thrilling stories from the files of the FBI, one of which will begin in just a moment, you realize how solidly and firmly these FBI men stand for national security in nearly everyone's mind. And that brings up an important fact about the sponsor of this program, the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. The Equitable Society stands for the security of life insurance in the minds of more than three and a quarter million Equitable Society policyholders, and with good reason. For the Equitable Society representative in your community is a trained man, familiar with life insurance in all its uses and applications. He's an expert in security, an authority on the subject and he'll show you, without obligation, how to build security through the Equitable Life Assurance Society for you, your home, and your country. Tonight's FBI file, Salesman of Espionage. A few months ago, we presented a special version of the official FBI motion picture, House on 92nd Street, which told for the first time the dramatic story of your FBI's war against some of the Nazi agents of espionage in America. Tonight, we turn back to the period immediately preceding December 7th, 1941, and bring you another story of counter-espionage on the home front. We break the seal on a chapter from the file, German Operations Galveston. In the days immediately prior to America's entry into the war, increased FBI surveillance under a presidential directive had so restricted the maneuverability of Nazi agents known to the FBI that the Nazis were forced, in many cases, to employ professional artists of intrigue, those whose business it is to spy for monetary profit. In some cases, those agents were German, in some cases Italian, and sometimes they were American. A few minutes ago on this particular night, a small cabin cruiser put out from a private pier near an isolated beach house somewhere in the Galveston area and headed out into the Gulf of Mexico. At the wheel, a young man about 22. His companion, a woman in her middle 40s. They're about four miles out now as the young man speaks to the woman. I say, Mother, we're in luck so far, but... But what, Richard? What if we should encounter the Coast Patrol? You have a permit for the boat, haven't you? Yes, but we hardly have a license to carry the kind of cargo we have on board. Let me worry about that, Richard. But suppose they should come aboard for inspection. I shall do the talking and no one will come aboard. But they just might. Richard, please. Okay. Oh, I detest violence of this kind. It's so uncouth. Well, there was nothing else to do after he repented and threatened to expose us. If we had let him get away, the jig would have been up for us. He was a handsome man, wasn't he, Richard? As I could tell, you thought so. Such a delightful cocktail companion, too. Well, getting back to business, Mater, what we learned from him should be worth at least $1,000 to the Germans. Nonsense, Richard. 2000 or they shan't have it. Oh, very well. Uh, don't you think this is far enough out? Eh, I should think so. Okay, then I'll cut her down and let her drift while we do the rest. Can you manage alone? Yes, I think so. Here goes. Well, au revoir, old dear. And thanks for the information. Two days later, Agent in charge Harrison of the Houston field office of the FBI, some 50 miles from Galveston, is at his desk when... Harrison speaking. This is police headquarters, Galveston, Mr. Harrison. Well, hello. I'm calling about the man reported missing the last two days. The construction engineer? Yes, sir. His body was found washed ashore this morning. 
so. The information he was known to have had on his person is missing. Well, it's not hard to tell who has the information by now, but who procured it for them is another problem. Is there any further assistance we can give you? Yes, for the time being, I'd like you to keep the discovery of the body quiet. We'll be glad to cooperate with you. I feel sure this is the work of professionals. If we can discover who they are, then we'll have a murder charge with which to take them out of circulation. I see. How was the man killed? 32 caliber automatic. All right, I'll have one of our men hop down and check details with you right away. And thank you for calling. Say, Mater, are you expecting someone here? Not this evening, Richard. Why? Well, somebody just drove up in the courtyard. What? Well, who is it? Well, I don't know. Maybe it's the police. Nonsense. It's been 48 hours, and there's been nothing in the papers or on the radio about it. Yes, but Mater... Moreover, there's nothing to connect us with it. Shall I go to the door? Wait. Look for the curtain. See who it is. Who is it? Looks like Mr. Sutter. Sutter. Go get him in quickly. And if he hasn't found out about the other night, don't say anything. I'm very sorry I had to come here. Come in, Mr. Sutter. Close the door quickly, Richard. Hi, right, Littler. Never mind that nonsense. Now, what pleases the reason for this visit? I'm sorry. It was necessary, Mrs. Fairfield. I told you at the beginning, Mr. Sutter, no one from the legation must ever be seen coming to this house. I have told you this is most urgent. What do you mean, urgent? Richard. The United States Army is strengthening its harbor defenses. We must have a map showing the new installations at once. Oh, oh is that all? Richard. I repeat, we must have the map at once. Well, I cannot work miracles, Mr. Sutter. I'm aware of that, Mrs. Fairfield, but uh, I may have a new contact for you who can get such a map. Who? Here is his name and description. And who is this Mr. Fargo? He came to my office this morning. Wanted to sell information. Information of what sort? I did not go into the matter with him. I said we could not entertain such a proposition because... Because Germany has no hostile intentions toward America. Yes, yes, go on. He said he could furnish information on almost anything. Do you consider him a good risk? That is for you to determine. We cannot assume that responsibility. Mm, I see. Well, where can Mr. Fargo be contacted? He lunches in the Palm Garden of the Gulf Park Hotel every day. Very well. $5,000 for the map, Mr. Sutter. That is too much. 1000 Good night, Mr. Sutter. 2000 Show Herr Sutter to the door, Richard. Very well. 5000 Thank you. Good night, Mr. Sutter. And will you please not join us at the Gulf Park for lunch tomorrow? Richard, can't you keep your eyes off those silly girls for a minute? Oh, they don't look silly from where I sit, Mater. We're here strictly on business. But our man hasn't shown up yet, so why can't I have a dance or two? Later, perhaps. But I think this is Mr. Fargo coming in now. Where? Medium built, dark complexion man. Oh. Well, don't stare at him. Well, what do you know? He's coming directly to our table. Mm, shouldn't wonder. Now let me do the talking. Good afternoon, madam. My name is Fargo. I believe you were expecting me. I beg your pardon, sir. May I sit down? It's less conspicuous for all of us that way. Thank you. Please, I'm sure you've made a mistake. Why don't we save time, madam? After all, you two were the only ones in the room who watched me closely as I walked in. I wasn't aware of that fact. You don't think I was fooled by Mr. Sutter's refusal of my offer? I beg your pardon? I expected him to refuse it. After all, he must play his little game. But making the offer was the only way I could make contact with his... <laughs> Shall we say, clearing house? Well, really. Richard, does your mother look like a clearing house? Would you like for me to go, madam? Forgive me. No, do stay. You aroused my curiosity. Well, perhaps I can satisfy it on one point anyway. Namely? A certain construction engineer. I beg your pardon? The police found his body yesterday, washed up on shore. Oh, waiter. Get this young man another glass of water. 
Just exactly who are you, Mr. Fargo? It's like I told Sutter. I'm a salesman, a dealer in all kinds of information, and... <laughs> no. No, I'm not working for the police, madam. I learned about the body because the police questioned me in connection with it for three hours last night. Oh. Hmm. And now, what can I do for you? I'm afraid it's rather a large order. Good. It should net us both a large fee. I understand the United States Army is installing some new harbors. Let me speak to Harrison, please. This is Special Agent Fargo. Harrison speaking. This is Fargo, Harrison. We're in. Yes? Who there are two it? of them. Two of them. A woman about 45 and her son about 21 or 2. You're sure they're the ones? You should have seen the reaction when I dropped the bombshell about the washed-up body. Yes, so what happened? The son dropped his glass of water. Well, we've got to have more proof than dropping a glass of water. Right. I realize that. When is your next contact? As soon as I get them a map of the new harbor defense installations. All right, we'll fix up a fake map right away. Good, good. Drop it in the mail to me here at the hotel tonight. Then I can contact them again tomorrow as planned. Where? They think here at the hotel. But this time I want to go to their house, wherever that is. And I think I know how I can find out where it is. I'll be in touch with you again in two hours. Right, and don't get yourself shot. Oh, hello, Richard. I I thought you and your mother had gone. Oh, is that why you went to the phone so fast? What do you mean by that? Why? <laughs> Look, kid, go ahead and be suspicious. We have to be in our kind of business, you know, safer. Yes, yes, I know. Go tell your mother I've got the map thing in the works. I think we ought to have it by tomorrow. So, I'll see you then. <laughs> I call his roommate. He's not there. Well, sit down, Richard. He'll probably be along soon. Well, I'm glad you're so confident. Now, please, Richard, don't start that again. Mater, I'm surprised that you, having, having had much more experience in this field than I, I, I'm surprised that you're not suspicious of him, too. It's because I've had much more experience than you that I'm not suspicious. Well, now is a good chance, maybe, to prove one of us is right. What do you mean? I could get into his room and have a look about. You do no such thing. But, Mater... Now, stop it. Being utterly childish. Okay. I beg your pardon, madame. Here is a telephone message I was asked to hand you. For me? Thank you. Oh, here you are. Thank you, madame. It's from Fargo, I'll bet. Richard. Yes, what's his alibi? He says he can't meet us here. He'll be waiting for us at our house. Be at our house? How did he know where it was? What's the idea? Come on, Richard. We must get there quickly. You have quite a charming place here, Mrs. Fairfield. Oh? I've been looking around your garden while I was waiting for you. Well, I trust you enjoyed yourself, Mr. Fargo. Oh, I hope you're not angry with me. That's not exactly the right word, Mr. Richard, please. I was afraid the police might be watching my movements in the city, even though they turned me loose. In which case, it wouldn't look good for you two if you were seen a second time in my company at the hotel. I told you we'd have a good alibi. If you're wondering how I found my way here, young man, it was easy. I watched you drive up to the hotel, took your license number, checked it for name and address, and here I am. With or without the map? With. Shall we go inside and look at all? Very well. I'll be in in a few minutes, Mater. I've got to look after a couple of things outside. All right, Richard. We'll be in the library. <laughs> Mr. 
As you can see on the map, Mrs. Fairfield, I've added a few notes of my own because the map was a little short on detail. You seem to have a thorough knowledge of the harbor. Knowledge is what I have to sell, madam. Let's not be so formal. <laughs> so you don't share your son's suspicion of me? Your explanation a while ago was entirely satisfactory to me, but... But? You could be selling a false map, you know. <laughs> well, even in our business, my, my dear, some measure of trust between buyer and seller is needed. Yes, I've always found that necessary. Please forgive me. Shall we shake hands on it? Oh, better than that. Oh? We'll have a glass of sherry on it. Fine. And drink a toast to further mutually profitable ventures in the line of... I hope I'm not intruding. Certainly not, Richard. Mr. Fargo and I... Yes, just... Richard, you're just in time to join us in toasting the success of our first venture together. The map is a splendid one, Richard. Oh, that's good? Well, I shouldn't think you'd be so indifferent about it. Get the sherry and glasses out of the cabinet over there. Oh, okay, okay. By the way, Mr. Fargo, there was one notation on the map I didn't quite understand. Well, what is that, Mrs. Fairfield? Uh, this one right here. Oh, oh, that. Well, what that means is... Oh, Richard. Oh. Richard, what on earth do you mean by this? Wait a minute. Yeah, yeah here it is, look. Cigarette case. It's an initial cigarette case, Mater. And he stole it out of the boat locker where I had it hidden. That isn't yours. Whose is it? That cigarette case, Mater, could have hung us. It belonged to the man we dumped overboard the other night. Back to the FBI files, salesman of espionage in just a moment. First, let me tell you something I learned this week at the Equitable Life Assurance Society. A representative told me about an interview he had with a very up-and-coming young man who called on him and said, See here, I've got about $500 a year free for investment of some kind. Some of my friends say, buy good stocks and bonds. Some say, start a savings account. Some say, buy a share in a small business. I get all kinds of advice. Now, what can you life insurance people offer me? Well, said the equitable representative, we've got a lot to offer, but first, Let's get down to the bedrock difference that distinguishes life insurance from all these other things. Suppose you put $500 into the bank today. You create an estate worth just $500. But suppose you take that $500 and buy a $25,000 life insurance policy. Well, the minute that policy is issued, you have created an estate worth not $500, but $25,000. Get the point? With most forms of investment, you start saving, and then gradually, over long, hard years, you create an estate. But with an equitable policy, you create an estate first, and then you start saving it. Now, I'm wondering if you've ever thought about that. You see, there are so many things concerning life insurance we all should know. And the Equitable Society representative in your community is ready to tell you about them without any obligation on your part. Yes, hundreds of just such responsible, friendly, equitable society representatives are busy this week, as they have been every week for more than 86 years, helping the equitable society to build security for you, your home, and your country. And now back to the FBI file... Salesman of Espionage. Yes, even during the days before the treachery of Pearl Harbor forced America into war against the Axis nations, their agents were plotting against the security of the United States. But night and day, 24 hours around the clock, special agents of your FBI were on the job, defeating their conspiracies at every turn. And quite often, as events thus far in tonight's case demonstrate, the job involved great personal risk to the special agents assigned to this duty. It is 30 minutes later now, and down at the Fairfield Beach House, Special Agent Fargo has just regained consciousness after being struck down from behind by young Richard Fairfield. 
I tell you, Mater, you're making a mistake. You should have let me finish the job. Quiet, Richard. I'm, I'm surprised your first blow didn't, young man. Why did you want that cigarette case, Mr. Fargo? You mean, am I a plainclothes policeman? Was I going to try to pin the murder of the engineer on you? Frankly, yes. So? So, if you are with the police, Mr. Fargo, we should have to take drastic steps to protect ourselves. Of course you would. Well? It's true. I was looking for incriminating evidence of murder. There. See, I told oh, you. Oh, Richard. But only because I wanted an axe to hang over you two as insurance against your double-crossing me. He's lying. I'm sure you've done the same thing with agents you've had to deal with before. It's an old trick, of course. I tell you, he's lying, Mater. Look here, kid. I've had enough trouble with you, you understand? So what? So I'd pin your wet ears back against your adolescent head if I weren't in a hurry to get downtown. Please, Mr. Fargo. You make one move to leave here, and I... <coughs> now, if you're a good little boy until I leave, I'll give you back your blackjack. I'm terribly sorry, Mrs. Fairfield. I apologize for my temper. Richard but... deserved it. Thank you. Now, about my pay for the map. When Sutter's paid me, I'll pay you. You'll trust me that long, won't you? Well, I... Uh... <laughs> of course. Good evening, my dear. <laughs> This is Fargo, Harrison. What's happened? We were worried when you didn't contact on time. I had contact with a blackjack. What? I'll be at the rendezvous in 15 minutes. Good. I'll be there before that. But they're absolutely guilty of the murder, Harrison. Oh, I'm convinced of it, too, after all you've told me, Fargo. If I could only get one piece of really incriminating evidence. You couldn't find the gun they used. Nah, no luck. The cigarette case would have only been supporting evidence. Well, just the same, I hated to part with it. But it was more important to bluff my way out of a tight situation. Hey, wait a minute. Yeah? Bluff? What are you thinking? If you bluffed your way out of their hands, maybe we can bluff them into our hands. What? You said Sutter installed one of his men yesterday in the hotel room next to yours at the Gulf Park. Yes. Yes, he's got a sound recorder that'll pick up anything I say in my room. Then maybe we can figure out some way to use that to our advantage. Yes? How's that? I'll go back to my office, Fargo. You go back to your hotel room and telephone me. And here's what you're to tell me over the phone. Mr. Sutter. Out of my way, quick. It wasn't necessary for you to come here for the map, Mr. Sutter. I was going to get it to you. I have not come for the map. What? I'm sure now that any map you may have gotten from Fargo is a fake. See there, mate, I told Shut you. Shut up, Richard. What are you saying, Mr. Sutter? There's an Italian merchant ship sailing in one hour. I've arranged safe passage for you both. Stop talking in riddles, please. This recording will explain everything. May I play it on your machine? By all means. I put an agent in the hotel room next to Fargo. Tonight he recorded this. Listen. The FBI. I knew it. Shut up. Hello, Harrison. This is Fargo. Yeah. Yeah, I've just come from the Fairfield house. No. No, I didn't find the gun they killed him with. But we won't need it. I'll have another piece of evidence in about two hours that's just as good. Then we'll move in on it. That's enough. Why didn't you tell me you had murdered that engineer? We got the information from him. That's all you wanted, wasn't it? Come on, Mater. We'd better get away from here quick. Yes. Once on the ship, you will be safe. I'm afraid you're going to miss that boat, what? Mrs. Fairfield. Oh. Fargo. Special Agent Fargo. And this is Agent in charge Harrison. We came in the back way while you were listening to Mr. Fargo's record. And you're both under arrest for murder. On what evidence? On your own admission of the crime to your employer, Herr Sutter. How did you know about the record? As you Nazis say, Sutter, we planned it that way. Mrs. Fairfield and her son Richard were both tried and convicted on a charge of first-degree murder. 
and paid for their crime in the electric chair. The members of your FBI join with all other Americans and all people of goodwill everywhere in the fervent hope that the day will soon come when men shall cease to spy against their fellow men, when all shall dwell on earth together in a spirit of mutual trust. But until that day comes, your FBI shall always go out to meet your enemies and to protect you, the American people. As you listen to This Is Your FBI, you must have realized why you look to your FBI for national security. Trained men such as these FBI agents are the best safeguards you can have. And you can depend upon the equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States for the same reason, able, trained men. The Equitable Society's name is in your phone book. And the Equitable representative in your community is skilled in all phases of life insurance security and experienced in its application to your particular problems. He specializes in building security for you, your home, and your country. Next week, we will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, The Singing Swindler. The incidents used on tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight's broadcast was directed by William M. Sweets. The music was under the direction of Frederick Steiner. The author was Frank Ferries, and your narrator was Dean Carlton. This is your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. Now this is Carl Frank speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week when the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Singing Swindler on this is your FBI. This program came to you from New York. Next week, many cities and towns will be on daylight saving time. If your community switches to daylight time, this program will be brought to you at exactly the same time you have been hearing it. But if you live in an area which remains on standard time, don't forget, this is your FBI will be broadcast one hour earlier. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. <laughs>